How's it going guys? I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from uh, my tutorial on how to create a mandala in Adobe Illustrator. So I thought I'd figure out how to do it in Photoshop using smart objects. And I think what I found is that I actually like doing it a little bit better in Photoshop uh, for a couple reasons. One of them being a new feature in Photoshop, which is the brush smoothing. Uh, but um, so yeah, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to create mandalas in Photoshop and uh, and then I'll probably jump into a time lapse to where where I'm creating one. Um, so I like to start out with a document size fairly large when I'm doing something that's primarily just line work. Um, so something like 5,000 by 5,000 and this way you get nice uh, crisp lines and if you do want to take this into Illustrator afterwards and uh, and and vectorize it or you know image trace it you can do that really uh, really well if you have nice crisp uh, lines so we're gonna start with a document a square document that's 5,000 by 5,000 and hit create so the next thing we need to do is figure out how many sort of pie slices we want in our mandala so um, I think generally we do like six or seven or something like that. So the the angles may be a little bit different depending on how many how many repetitions you want in your mandala. But for the most part, um, it's it's going to be the same uh, depending. So we're going to start with the line tool, and I'm going to make my uh, fill no fill color, and we're going to do a black stroke. And uh, since we have a pretty large document size, I have a fairly high stroke size. We probably make that even something like 20. Um, but this is just going to be a guide. We're not going to keep these strokes in it. And while holding down shift, I'm just going to drag down a straight line to somewhere around the center of my document. And so you see how, how thin that line is, even though we had it set to... Uh, to a fairly large size. Uh, but then I'm going to right click on that layer and duplicate it. So I have two of them. And then I'm going to hit Control or Command T depending on if you're on Windows or, or uh, Mac. Um, and that's going to uh, give us our free transform function. And once you're in your free transform tool over here you have this sort of pivot point uh, little guy and we can change that to the bottom or the bottom right corner probably doesn't matter bottom corner is probably pretty well and then here we have the angle so we'll want to set the angle to 30 degrees or let's do let's do negative 30 degrees so it's like that and we hit apply and so as I said this is really just a guide we're not uh, we're not going to keep these so the next thing I want to do is go to my pen tools and let me make sure I deselect. So we're going to go to the pen tool. Again, same thing. Actually for this one we can do we can do no stroke and probably like a light gray or something for the fill color. And I'm going to click on that top point up there, as close as I can get it. And then I'm going to hold down shift so I get a straight line at that bottom there and then I'm going to try to get it as close as I can to this point and then we'll just go ahead and close that shape so that is our pie slice um, so now I can delete these other two guys don't need them anymore and uh, this is going to be what I want to convert into a smart object so um, to do that, super easy, just going to right click and say uh, convert to smart object. And then, um, and then we have our smart object. So uh, now we can start duplicating these around to give us our full circle mandala. Mandala. I've learned recently that I was pronouncing that word wrong, and it's actually mandala and not mandala. So I'll do my best to to f alleviate or fix that issue. But uh, I may mess up sometimes and say mandala just because I'm used to it. 
so we're going to uh, we're going to duplicate this guy. So we're going to duplicate this this layer, and then I can hit Control or Command T for free transform. Set my pivot point here to the right side, and then where it says width one hundred percent, I'm going to change that to negative one hundred percent and hit enter to fix that. And then I'm gonna select both of those and duplicate them, duplicate layers. And then I'm going to control T one more time, set my pivot point at the bottom. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. So now I have uh, four shapes. I will duplicate those, duplicate layers, hit Control T, and now I can just use this center point as a pivot point because I've got both sides here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate these 60 degrees, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna leave those four layers selected, and I'm gonna right click, duplicate layers. Control T to free transform, and then rotate another 60 degrees until I have something that looks uh, like a um, hectagon. I, I don't know what how how many sides that would be or what the correct term for that would be. So now I have all of my shapes. Um, I can go in and put these guys in a group. So control G to put all those in a group. And then I can just select the group and move. Let's see, maybe hit control T and move that whole group in the center. So uh, now I can go down to that very bottom shape, which is the first one that I created and double click the thumbnail. So I go into the smart object. And now this is why I like doing this in Photoshop better than Illustrator. It's because you can take these two documents, you can pull this off. There may be a way to do this in Illustrator, I'm just not sure of it. And we can, oops, we can zoom out a little bit and we can put that right there. Maybe zoom out, make that a little bit smaller. So we can actually see our entire Mandela as we're working on it. So in, in this document here, um, I can create a new layer and I can just start drawing. And this is the other reason I like uh, Photoshop because Photoshop just added this new smoothing, um, this new smoothing brush, which is it's a setting all of your brushes have. But if I increase this and I begin drawing, you'll see that a little sort of tail so it kind of delays the brush, uh, which is really nice and lets you get really smooth lines. Uh, you also have this point pulled uh, string mode here, which gives you a radius. So it's going to be really help helpful for creating sort of jagged lines like that. So um, we still need a few other things here to, to get this to work properly. You'll see gaps in uh, in the complete mandala here. So basically what I can do is I can just start drawing shapes like that and just hit Control S to save and then that's going to update. So see how these guys overlap? Um, that's because you, you're you getting this section here in your mandala as well. So to fix that and fix our gaps. Um, so if I if we look at the gap on, so let's zoom into this guy. I'm actually not seeing any gaps, so that's pretty good. But I'll show you how to get rid of gaps just in case you're seeing any. So on this layer, we'll just go ahead and delete that guy. And I'm going to control click this thumbnail, and I get that selection. And then I'm going to go up to select. 
uh, modify, expand, and we'll expand this probably since we have such a large document. Five pixels is probably going to be pretty good. So we'll expand that. Um, and now what I want to do is create a group. So with that empty layer, I'll just hit Control G and I'm going to mask the group. So I'll just, with that selection, I'm just going to hit my quick mask button. So I've masked the group. So now I can create a new layer inside of that group. And if I draw outside of that, we don't see it. And I can just hit Control S to save. And then we're going to see that update. And if I zoom in here, we have no gaps. So, um, so I really like the fact that I can look at the entire mandala as I'm working on shapes here. Um, it's really, really helpful to kind of see how the entire, entire thing is going to help or, or come along. And I really like this new smoothing, um, new smoothing method for your brush. I've been, you know, this is one of the features that I've wanted. Uh, Photoshop to have for the past decade and even though other uh, software packages out there like Autodesk Sketchbook, ZBrush and Mudbox 3D packages they've had it since their you know their creation and Photoshop has just been really late to the game uh, with this feature but I'm super glad it's here now. So anyway I'll jump to a time lapse of me just playing around making uh making a mandala and uh, and i hope you know i hope this has been a, a great uh, video for you guys i hope you you've learned something from it um as always if you want me to make any specific videos feel free to comment below i'm always very active um actively looking at the comments to see what people are saying so i know in my last uh illustrator mandala um, tutorial my audio was very low and so I, I hope I've I've fixed that I've, I'm always sort of tweaking with the audio uh, but anyway uh, enjoy and please comment below and I'll also post the illustrator um, tutorial as well